Can we talk about when you did this tattoo on Eminem? Because that was that like a seismic shift in how well known you were? Because words can't express how big Eminem was at that time. I mean, it was crazy, man. It was it was a a phenom rapper kid. I seen him perform before I knew who he was. Mm. And it was at um one of Bigger B's events in downtown. And we show up and M walked on stage and the whole crowd's like, woo, you know, like who's this? Cool. Not a lot of white rappers then, probably. No, they were not. People were not hyped. And then five minutes into him rapping, that whole place was fucking quiet as fuck. Really? And uh, I ended up meeting him through Cypress and Stevon, and uh, they had the same management, you know? And once I tattooed him, I no longer needed a portfolio. Back then, we used to have portfolios. Right. Where we had all of our shit and photographs of, in these books, and we'd send them to record labels. And you really didn't need to bring it around anymore just because the Eminem tattoo was so famous? He was just on so many covers of magazines, like like that, you know, yeah. with his fist, his arm out, bicep and, out. And he just did that. He didn't, like, go crazy and do the rest of his arm, so that thing really stood out. And little by little, he would come and get more, right. you know? And uh, it was a trip to see... Uh, someone that's a master of what he does and uh, they almost have a, a lightweight glow. You know what I'm saying? Like Nas or Beyonce or someone like that walks in. You're like, oh, shit. And you had to you do know? it in a hurry because Eminem was about to go on a date? Eminem had a date with, uh, yeah. He had a date and he was like, I was like, you know, I'm doing your daughter's portrait, Holmes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no pressure and shit. <laughs> and I'm at a studio in New York, you know, which is above the original Supreme really? building. Wow. And, um, yeah, so, the, you know, it's always a precious situation. When I went into the 36 Chambers to tattoo Method Man, everyone was there smoking, drinking, the lights, the chairs are, you know. Compare that to working in your studio with perfect lighting, your oh. exact equipment. Is it a completely different ballgame from your perspective? For sure. Mm. It, it, being on the road, you have to pack everything in Pelican cases. We got it polished now. We We got it down because mm. we've been doing it for 20 mm. years, but... In the beginning, in those days, it was a lot harder working with one little light in a studio and everyone's, uh, it's like tattooing in a nightclub in a crowd, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've walked into Shoreline Mafia sessions and there's been two dudes doing tattoos and there's like 40 guys in there, a hundred blunts lit at the same time. And I'm just like, that's just, I have a lot of respect for what you're doing right there, my friend. Yeah, like you'll never walk in and see like an orthodontist surgeon <laughs> taking off of someone's mouth and everyone's <laughs> fucking smoking and shit, yeah. you know? <laughs> or someone getting those old lady's tits done. Right. And how about just showing up, the doctor's homeboy starts showing up. Hey, what's up, fool? What you doing? <laughs> oh, shit. Those look good. People drunk as hell. Because that's how tattoo shops are. They confuse them for barber shops. Mm. And they want to come in here and tell me their life story. And uh, yeah, they, they like to hang out and bullshit. So I had to, over the years, start narrowing that down mm. and streamlining that so I could get shit done. Yeah, um, definitely. That So when you look at your life, these days how you like to structure it like you know i'm sure you could be doing 80 hours of tattoos a week if you wanted to how, how much do you bite off what where do you find your sweet spot at because i'm sure you don't you're not doing the tattoos because you need an extra couple hundred bucks in your pocket right. you're doing it because it's enjoyable part of your life how do you schedule it for sure that, that's a job in itself so you have to uh when i started watching m and and 50 and all them when they were new and how they were moving they told me hey man you need them you need a manager. You need some help. Mm. Like you're doing everything yourself. You're negotiating the shit. You're answering, you know, calls or email back, and you're doing the tattoo. So you need to uh, let go of some of the bread and bring someone in. So that's when I think it started to change. When I started to get some help, my guy Hunter, he's been here for 13 years now. Um, he, you know, from England. So when they hear a call back from me, it's with the Queen's English. <laughs> so you know, the price goes up. Right. That's a good point. But I had Smiley from White Fence answering the phone, but it just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. So I try to keep the homies around and keep them employed if I can, you know what I mean? But Hunter's job is to be able to space all that out. So all you artists out there, eventually you're going to want to space out your artwork. So this much tattooing, we streamline that down a lot and only work pretty much on a lot of uh, repeat clients and choice new ones. Mm. And then I have to do illustrations. So I have to pause from that and start drawing, say, the Clippers artwork, mm. right, for logos and T-shirt graphics and apparel. Then from there, you're going to go and you have to do a painting. Mm. 
Christian Hosoi is doing a thing with Ruka, and I got to do a painting for that. And every day is like this for you, where it's just you're bouncing around. You, you're doing tattoos, you're doing art, you're doing a million different things, right? Yeah, and then you got to come and do an interview and be able to like break that shit down and have current projects going, like staying. Like I just went back to China because I haven't been in China in 10 years. Mm. And I had to go reintroduce myself to a whole new generation of kids that are just learning about tattooing and hip hop. Right. So you have to you have to um, be strategic, but a lot of times too we do a lot of outreach. Right. We go into um, junior highs and, and high schools or bring kids to an event, and I tell them, you know, my formula, and I kind of dare them to do it, and tell them that hey, maybe if art's not your thing, installing car stereos or learn how to do body and paint. Do you feel like you get a lot out of that experience of having those real conversations with people? I do. I started doing it um, by mistake. My friends became art teachers. Ah. And they were like, hey, man, the kids will listen to you. Come over. You know, you got tattoos, they'll, they'll listen. And they, you know, they just want to ask me how much to fix their fucked up tattoos. <laughs> kids in junior high and shit. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to give them the fucking keys to the, to the game right here. And yeah. Like, well, how much to fix this? You know? But sometimes they say if one kid pays attention did good you know mm. and sometimes the one kids me and as, as much as it's maybe not necessarily the most efficient use of your time i feel like it's, it's important to do human shit like that you know just have a real human connection with some kid yeah can do a lot for your mind state especially when we do these type of we have our jobs are kind of off of our imagination our mm. passion our our detail our, our like, we got it good right yeah. so in order to keep in my head, the only way I can keep this is by giving it away. Yeah. Right. So my old man's like that. I've been raised like that. Of, you know what? You got a fucking dream life, and you need to help others along the way if you can. I like that. The only way I'm gonna keep this is by giving it away. That honestly, that just hit me, because that's there's a lot of truth to that. Well, when you try to hoard it, when I tried to learn these old dinosaurs, these angry motherfuckers. They didn't want to give me nothing because mm. they thought I was going to use it against them and, and take their work and underbid them. Wrong, wrong picture of me. I was not, I was not my intention. But in a way, they helped me because they made me take apart an airbrush and put it back together mm. or figure out how a tattoo machine works. And, you know, the, you got to learn. So, but I'm not going to be there every day for these youngsters. I'm not going to give them my cell number. So, this is it. Right. But I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm planting a seed that if they work hard and get their shit together, they can do it. Right, because, I mean, you know, people inspired you. It's like you kind of you owe it to other people to, to do that as well. I did get helped along the way. Mm. There were people that took the time and they said, hey, Tune, you're fucking up, bro. Mm. Stay away from that, that dark shit. And, uh, you know, I mean, also I work for Hustler Magazine. I've done Jules Jordan's logos. Oh, I know Jules, yeah. You know, so... Uh, Working for Hustle, I mirrored Larry Flint's limo. Really? I put uh, pussies hidden into orchids on the side of his limo. You know, there's this hotel that we go to for brunch sometimes, and Larry Flint, we can always just tell, because we see him in there, he's got a gold wheelchair, and then also he's got this big-ass car out front that says sure. Flint. But I don't, I don't, he doesn't bring the, the low rider out. Yeah, I mean, it was just a, a, like a Lincoln limo. Okay. But only he can get away with like life-size nude women <laughs> on, the, on the quarter panel of his car. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny um when you look at who you, do you have a crazy waiting list in terms of people who want to get tattooed by you is that something you deal with yeah it's uh most professional artists have a waiting list you know if, you, if they don't you know watch out but do you have an oppressive list that forces you to make a lot of tough choices because you have so many people that are trying to get tattooed by you, you probably got clients you've tattooed a million times who want to sure, come get new sure. stuff but it's impossible because i'm a one-man show yeah so uh Half of our job is just trying to figure all that out. Uh -huh. How to, how do you do that, but then work on an animation project that you want for your own shit. Tattooing you know is so I mean? time intensive. Yeah, and there's no shortcuts, and it's uh, it's very difficult. But uh, yeah, it, it's all about that. It's all about being able to be in different worlds. But then you're like, you got to design this shoe. You need to put your shoe hat, like your 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 sneaker head cap on, mm. and dive into that shit, and then. Staying relevant in different worlds is difficult. So what, what I try to do is just be me. 
right? And I got a 15 year old kid, 14 year old daughter. I'm watching them. I'm tripping on their shit. What music they're listening to? Right. You know, I'm 50 years old. My homeboys are complaining about modern day hip hop. I'm like, you old motherfuckers, man. You know how you sound complaining about fucking rock and, and rap music? Come right. on. But they're complaining more that music is shit. Mm. So I go, okay, are you trying to say that Kendrick Lamar is shit? Right. And they go, well, no, no, not him. All right, what about Tiara Wack? Mm. Oh, she's she's dope. She's creative. That's dope. You know who she is. Yeah, you got to stay on top of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Uh, Doja Cat. She's dope too, right? I go to my daughter. I go, baby, what do you think about Doja Cat? She's like, dad, I love that girl. I was like... I thought I was going to put my daughter on to something. My shit. girlfriend just recently hit me with that. She's like, Doja Cat is so good. I love her. I'm like, oh, well, if my girlfriend knows about it, then it means it's starting to spread to the mainstream a little bit. I have news for everyone. Mm. These new art student kids are dope. Mm. They know about old school hip hop. They can paint the album cover, edit the video, sing, dance, act. And they're and they're dope on top of it. So really interesting. It's this whole new wave, and and there's a whole new wave of young people doing classic soul, right? Like the Sincere's. Um, there's uh, K. P. Finnegan. There's uh, Mayor Hawthorne. There's um, Duran Jones. I just started getting tapped into some of the stuff, the, like new music that sounds like old school soul stuff. Yeah, I call it new vintage. Right. So it's like. Sounds like the Delphonics in 1965. Yeah. But that shit came out like two weeks ago. That's nice. And you're like, oh shit. Like this this is dope. So uh the Lakesiders, mm. kids from East LA that, that are dope and, and I gotta get into that. Let me ask you this. When you have something like a Drake or an OVO collab like where you're wearing right now, do you sort of end up doing the collabs that come your way? Do you sort of have a wish list of like this is the stuff I think is dope and I sort of reach out and try to make these collabs happen? How does that normally go? A lot of times the collabs, they, they come to us. Mm. Um, but I only want to work with people I already fuck with. Like if I already support your brand or would wear that shit, I'm down with that. So, you know... Um, I fuck with Drake. I fuck with the music. I've been to Toronto. I see how that city moves. I'm like, I fuck with all that shit. So when it came time, I liked the way that uh, the apparel's made. Cut and sew. You know, right quality. And uh, I fuck with it. So, And I was able to do what I wanted to do. That's really important that they let me do my shit. Mm. So, um, and you got to be careful with it, you know, like. Um, sometimes you do shit and it don't blow. Like I've done Supreme designs 15 years ago. Really? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm going to kill him. With it. And, you know, it's like people didn't know what Supreme was. Mm. I was like, fuck. That's so funny that you, you got it a little too early. I mean, yeah. I mean, I was there, though, so I was like, I put my flag down before you motherfuckers. You can still shit. say you did it at the end of the day, yeah. <laughs> and I do holiday windows, like gold leaf the Supreme store window. Oh, really? Wow. Like, that is painstaking work. Really? And it's all done by hand, and it's done backwards, because you got to do it on the other side of the glass and do it reverse. When you get offered something like that, is there any temptation in your mind to, like, have, you know, a team help you do stuff, whether it's, like, on a mural or, or, or a tattoo or whatever? Like, if, if you're doing a tattoo and there's just a big wall of black shit you got to fill in, do you ever have an assistant come help you out? Well, I have apprentices, and I, I definitely have a team when I show up. Okay. So... When I show up to do a gold leaf window, um, I bring my assistant that has gone to school, Trey Tech, where I went. I only went to one year of schooling, L.A. Trey Tech in 1988, and he went there in like 2008. But he's been trained the same way, so he'll definitely help me with, the, you know, half the grunt work on that right. shit. Right, okay. Uh, tattoos, I do them all myself, but they help me get the pattern ready, shrink this shit in Photoshop, size it up for the customer's arm. Now they're starting their shit. They're prepping the customer's arms. Mm. They're shedding, stepping up my station. So I just really have to step in and go. 